For 90 days, I drew Chris Hemsworth every day to see how good I could get. I've always enjoyed drawing, especially doodling during class, just drawing sketches, but I've never been exceptional at it. I'm pretty decent at drawing trees, but other than that, I can't really draw much. I realized coming into the first day of this challenge, where I was just thinking about improving at drawing in general, that drawing is a very broad field. There's a lot you can do with drawing. So I decided to focus on portraiture. And when I sat down to start drawing a portrait, I realized you actually have to have someone to draw before you can draw a person. I was thinking about drawing someone random every day and just looking at stock figures. And then I decided instead to draw Chris Hemsworth, the most handsome man on earth. Because if I can get him right, I could make anyone look good. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It does make sense. It makes sense to me. <laughs> okay, sure. My thought process was, <laughs> since he's the most handsome man on earth, I know it doesn't make sense. But if I could draw him correctly and make him look good, then I could draw anyone else and make them look good because I've already mastered the perfect features. <laughs> that was... <laughs> That was my thought process. So once I made those decisions, I sat down to draw, I pulled up a reference picture of him and I started drawing. And I tried to add as much detail as I possibly could, but after 30 minutes, I couldn't think of anything else to draw. So I did another one and I spent another 30 minutes that same day drawing Chris. And he kind of looked apish. He looked kind of like a monkey, but I was actually pretty proud of what I'd done. It looked a lot better than what I thought I was going to be able to do. All I'd really ever done before are stick figures. So the fact that this looked like a face made me really happy. I realized I needed to know how to improve or how I could get better before I could actually start practicing. So I looked up some videos on day two of how people draw portraits. And I realized there's lots of different techniques. Most of them center around getting proportions right. Some people draw like a big plus around the face other people do an X with a plus in between it, and other people use what's called a grid approach. And this was the one that seemed most promising to me. What you do is you take your reference photo and you draw a grid on it, tons of little squares. And you take your piece of paper that you're going to draw on and you draw tons of little squares there as well. And the grid should be the same on both. And that way you know exactly where or which squares contain the nose, which squares contain the lips, where features cross over, Essentially, you're tracing at that point. Armed with this new approach, I decided to give it a try. And I spent a day drawing a grid over a reference photo of Chris and then a grid on a piece of paper I was going to draw on. divided the piece of paper into the grids and started drawing everything, I realized how much detail there really is in the picture and how much detail you can put on a face. And my drawings went from taking half an hour to taking like six hours. This new technique is really useful because it gives you exactly where each feature is gonna be, but it takes a really long time. Like here is me drawing in real time. Today I finished the drawing that took me a few days to draw of Crips Hemsworth and compared to the first day, I think I've made some solid progress. The main difference I think is this drawing took me half an hour, this drawing took me like four hours. So definitely a lot more effort. I think there's still a lot to improve. One thing that I think was holding me back a little bit was the fact that I was only using a regular number two pencil. So today I bought a set of pencils of varying intensities. So lighter and darker pencils. Um, I'll play around with those, hopefully they help. I also bought a kneaded eraser, which instead of 
rubbing off, using friction to take off graphite, it pulls graphite off the paper. So it should be helpful for finer details. I can shape it and pull like hairs out, for example, if I want to do highlights like I tried to do here. Then I also bought some new paper. This paper is a little less coarse than the paper I was using. All these things should help a little bit in my practice. With this grid approach, my drawings became a lot more realistic. He no longer looked like an ape. And now I could see why he had looked that way before. All my features and proportions had been wrong. And now I had a sure way of getting the proportions right. And even though each drawing took multiple days, I was really enjoying the drawing process. Drawing itself became really meditative for me. I could just sit down, listen to some great music, and draw and I wouldn't have to worry about making mistakes because you can just erase it and even if you completely screw up you can just draw another one the next day At the end of these 30 days, I was really happy and very impressed with my progress. Comparing day one to day 30 is just night and day. still didn't look like Chris. It still wasn't perfect. Even though I knew the features were in the right places and the proportions were all correct, he still somehow looked disproportionate. One glaring example is he looks like he has a huge double chin. And I realized this is because of shading. I know nothing about shading. And shading makes a huge difference to how realistic a drawing is and how much life there is in the drawing. So over the first 30 days, I think I've gotten the features right or at least the proportions right through the grid approach. And now in the next 30 days, I'm going to spend some time learning how to shade and hopefully bring those features to life. If you enjoyed this video and want to see me try to master new skills, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if there's anything you think I should learn next.